from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, December the 1st, 2016. Two Iranian men were arrested this week in Kenya for allegedly planning an attack on Israelis in the country. The two were intercepted while traveling in a diplomatic vehicle in Nairobi and charged on Tuesday with collecting information to facilitate a terrorist act after they were said to have been found with video footage of the Israeli embassy. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas addressed the Fatah Congress in Ramallah last night. Abbas told the gathering that 2017 will be the, quote, year of the Palestinian state and end of the Israeli occupation, unquote. Abbas said he was still committed to negotiating with Israel towards a two-state solution, but that he was against any deal that would lead to provisional borders for a Palestinian state. He said the next Fatah Congress will be held in East Jerusalem, calling it, quote, the eternal capital of Palestine. Abbas also said the Fatah party, which rules Palestinians in the West Bank, will step up, quote, popular peaceful resistance in all of its forms, and added that the PA was against terrorism. The five-day conference is the first such gathering since the last Fatah Congress in 2009. Israel's new ambassador to Turkey, Eitan Na'eh, arrived in Ankara this morning. The appointment and arrival of Na'eh is seen as the final stage of Israel's reconciliation with Turkey after ties were severely strained in the aftermath of the Mavi Marmara incident in May of 2010, when Israeli commandos boarded the ship that was attempting to breach Israel's blockade with Gaza. Armed Turkish protesters on board attacked the Israeli troops, and in the clashes that ensued, nine Turkish citizens were killed and several Israeli commandos were injured, prompting Turkey to recall its ambassador from Tel Aviv and expel the Israeli ambassador. Na'eh, who has served in Turkey in the past, said he was very happy to be back as envoy. He told reporters at the airport that he was grateful for the warm welcome and that there was much work to be done. He also thanked Turkey for their recent help in sending firefighting planes to help Israel battle the numerous fires that blazed across the country last week. And two Israeli Arab lumber suppliers have come forward to lend their help in the wake of the fires. Ynet reports that Walid Abu Ahmed and Ziad Yunus decided to supply free wood paneling and free labor to a conservative synagogue in Haifa that was destroyed during the fires. Abu Ahmed said Jews and Arabs live together in Haifa and there is no discrimination. He said we must continue with this coexistence and promote peace. Yesterday, the synagogue hosted Muslim and Christian leaders to issue a joint call for such cooperation and understanding. Two bipartisan bills were passed in the U.S. House of Representatives this week, promoting collaboration between the U.S. and Israel on cybersecurity research and development. The House unanimously passed the United States-Israel Advanced Research Partnership Act of 2016 and the United States-Israel Cybersecurity Cooperation Enhancement Act of 2016 on Tuesday. The bills were introduced back in July by Republican Congressman John Ratcliffe of Texas and Democrat Jim Langvin of Rhode Island. The legislation now awaits approval in the Senate. Jewish communities across Israel will hold programs to call attention to the needs of individuals with disabilities this weekend. Accessibility Shabbat is an initiative of Tzohar, the organization of Zionist Orthodox rabbis in Israel, and is being held in coordination with the International Day of Persons with Disabilities this Saturday, with a particular focus on making attending synagogue easier for those with disabilities. Sohar launched their campaign with a video demonstrating the Shema prayer recited in sign language.
And taking a look now at our programming for tonight, for Thursday, December the 1st, at 7 o'clock, it's Talmud Study with Rabbi Mordechai Becker. At 7.30, family therapist Neil Marin talks about dating from the Union for Traditional Judaism's Finding Love in the Jewish Community Conference, followed at 8 with the complexities of intermarriage, also from the UTJ. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Jewish feminist author Phyllis Chesler on L'Chaim. And at 10, Rabbi Mark Schneier and Imam Shamsi Ali talk about issues that divide and unite Jews and Muslims from the Skirball Center for Jewish Learning at Temple Emanuel in New York City. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, Mark Golub speaks with Carol Greenwald, who discusses the Coalition of Pro-Israel Advocates' Opposition to some recent positions expressed by the Anti-Defamation League. That's on tonight's In the News. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, December the 1st, 2016. I'm Tisha Bader.